This is Trooper Steve Byron, retired from the 58th RTT, and I'm conducting an interview with Trooper Robert Benoit, retired as well. And this is for the Massachusetts State Police Museum and Learning Center's video project called Before We Forget. Bob, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Robert Benoit. Uh, I was assigned to uh, the Athol Barracks uh, from 1974 to 1980, and then from 1980. To 19, my God, I almost forgot. 2000. 2000, yeah, to 2000, and uh, gosh, uh, can you help me out with this, 10? Steve? Uh, Wasn't it 2010? Uh, no, 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 it was uh, 2008. So 2000, July 24th, 2008. And then you went to the academy. No, I was, uh, during this, this time, uh, I spent when they had a class going through, I'd spend a week or two weeks uh, at the academy with the boxing instruction for the recruit class, classes as they went through. So, you know, out of 34 years I had on the job, I probably collectively spent a year at the academy if you broke it all down. So going back to the beginning of your career, yes, the boxing team didn't exist when you came on the state police. That's correct. And you had, you were the, the impetus that got the boxing team organized. Well, you know, uh, it's funny how things start. Uh, we had a guy in town, great big guy, Lee LaJoy, great guy, he was a Cub Scout leader. And he said to me, Bob, I've got to raise some money. We've got to take the kids, he says, in town down to Treasure Valley. And I, we need a few hundred dollars. So he says, there's something the state police can do that would be a fundraiser. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and of course, you know, boxing was my thing. And I said, well, yeah. Now, Let me you, see. When you say boxing was your thing, tell me about your boxing career before the state police. Okay. Well, uh, before I, well, I, what I did is I, I fought professionally from 1966 uh, to 1974, and I, uh, I had 45 professional fights. I won 37. I lost eight. Um, and I, the state police, going on the state police, uh, you know, put an end to that. Because then I became government property, I, I couldn't do it anymore. So They wouldn't authorize you to be a professional fighter and a trooper at the same time? Right, center. right, right, yeah, which actually makes perfect sense. Now, the transition from being a professional fighter, what brought you to the state police? Well, I was a, I was a Spencer police officer for two and a half years before oh. I got on the state police. And then before that, I was on the OCAM police department for a couple of years, working one evening a week, okay, whether they needed me or not, on a Saturday night. And... Uh, you know something it was like putting on a it was like putting on a shoe that fit real good. I just I just liked the work. I just did. So you get onto the state police. You're stationed in Athol. Yes. And is, is the Cub Scout troop is in Athol? No, it was my hometown of Oakham. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. And uh, so I said, well, maybe we can put on a boxing show. I said, let me see if I can get ten guys together. And I did. I went around. I got ten guys. As a matter of fact, this is where they are right here. That's the original tent. These, this picture was taken 20 years after we fought in Oak Hill. 20 years later, we had an anniversary show at the Host Hotel in Sturridge, and I got the original team back. Look at them, they look like a million bucks with tuxedos on there. And uh, we had a great night that night. And that night, I gave every one of them a DVD of the first fight in O Camp. Tommy Ma showed up at the fights that night and he had a handheld camera and took some pictures and took took motion pictures. And I was able to get it and get it put on a DVD with his help. And so when he we had a party the night of the fights, after the party, on their way out to the, the arena, I gave them all a copy of their first fight uh, in O Camp. Uh, it was a great night and they're all good guys. Well, most of them are good guys. I mean, you know. There's, it's quite a collection. There's some serious rank from the state police in that picture. Oh, wow. We, uh, tell, tell, we've me got, who, tell me who's there. Well, listen, we've got, uh, there he is, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jack Dunn there. Uh, beside him, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Jack Cunningham, uh, Major Grabowski. Uh, over here to the far right, Colonel uh, Mark Delaney. Yeah, we were, we were top-heavy with brass. Uh, we, of course, we didn't know it at the time. That was later on. 
And Leo Leo Gerstel, I recognize. Oh, Leo Gerstel. Well, yes, that's right. Uh, Leo Gerstel. Retired captain. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, also a professional fighter at one time. Leo had one fight. That's he all it takes one, to be professional. And he, he remained undefeated uh, in his career. He fought under the name of Leo Yates. Y a y a t e s. Leo Yates. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a whole other story. But uh, it, he didn't have it in Massachusetts. It was down in the Carolinas. But one, this this was. These were all troopers at the time. Oh yeah, these yeah these, these guys were all troopers. And uh, you know, it was it was so much fun. We had a party at my house afterwards, and the uh, I had a small house at the time. I had a small house, and uh, I everybody could like barely get in, but it was a blast. Everybody had so much fun. Everybody sky high. Now, where did you get? The ring and all of that. Well, we didn't big have borrow steel. No, no, we didn't have a ring back then. We fought off of mats. Ah. We fought. We called the boot, bump and white boot like boxing shows, and uh, because we didn't exactly follow uh, rules and regulations of the uh, state boxing commission. However, we ironed that out later down the road. Um, the uh, I had a guy come up to me at the party. He said, "Bob, he said I got a Cub Scout group in my town." I said, "Well, what town?" He said, "Hudson." I said, "Well, Hudson, I." What do you want? He said, well, can we do a show like this in Hudson? I said, well, let me ask him. So I went around asking the guys, and, oh, yeah, let's do it again. So we ended up doing it, I don't know, four or five weeks later in Hudson. And it was, a, it was just a blast. It was a lot of fun. And you know something? See, we never stopped. We it, never stopped. It, we it, never looked back. We just kept doing them. It actually grew international, though. Well, it grew international. We, uh, uh, we've competed with uh, elements of the London Metropolitan Police. Uh, the Moscow Militia, that's Moscow, Russia, Militia, uh, the Bermuda Police Department for many, many years, uh, as well as the NYPD, the Denver Police, uh, which we had, uh, we developed Home Away series with uh, Denver, Bermuda, and NYPD, off and on for several years. But the big one was Bermuda. We went to Bermuda in 1979, and we fought them down there with a complement of 12 boxes, 12 troopers. And uh, uh, they in turn came back up here and fought us, and it went on for 10 years, from 1979 to 1989. That must have been quite a financial commitment to get the boxes to, to uh, Bermuda. It's not well, we weren't, look, in the 70s, we weren't rolling in money, okay? I mean, everybody was. But uh, what happened is that I was able to get private sponsors, a construction company, a, uh, a towing company, okay? And I get enough of them together, and I would do a fight ad program, a fight book program, and I put their ads in there, okay? And collectively, okay, in doing so, raised enough money to finance the trip to Bermuda. We'd pay for the airfare, and we'd pay for the troopers, uh, we'd pay for the troopers' uh, lodging also. Down in Bermuda, Bermuda would uh, provide the dinners and stuff like that. Uh, and we did the same when they came up here. But it was a great exchange. We had people get married out of this exchange. Believe it or not, guys got married out of this thing. Um, it was uh, unique, and I think uh, it started a, a, oh, what would you call it? I mean, a brotherhood. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly a brotherhood. At least that, yeah, at least that. Uh, I'm speaking off a, a script that hasn't been prepared yet. Now, so do I'm you have? Wing it a little bit. Do you still have contact with the uh, fighters from Bermuda and some of these other places? Well, I do. As a, as a matter of fact, I've got one coming to my house, and he's going to stay with me for six weeks. He's coming over from England. He retired from Bermuda. Sergeant Kendrick Lewis retired from Bermuda. Is living in London now, and he's coming over. June, let's strike that, uh, September 2nd. Now, will you guys up. be sparring every morning? To oh, no, no, that ship has sailed. Uh, no, we, ah. But uh, we're going to, he and I, we're taking off. We're going out to Arizona for a week. I got a timeshare out there. And then we're going to go to Las Vegas for uh, five or six days after that. And then back home. Uh, and uh, he's, he loves America. Sergeant Ken Lewis said, I would give up my British citizenship if I could become America. I love this country. I hate to see him go. He gets me so pumped up about the place. I hate to see him go home for crying out loud. But uh, uh, a great guy. There's a, there's a friend. Uh, we've been pals since 1979. Now, you ran the boxing team benefit for from 79 through how long? Uh, from 79 
up to uh, up to uh, 92, up to 90. I had it for 17 years. I ran it for 17 years, and I put on 100 shows. Wow. 100 shows, and uh, I retired on my 100th show from running the whole thing. I turned it over uh, to Charlie Murray, and uh, I stuck around for like maybe three years, still doing work and as a visor, but I, I gave him the ball to carry. Uh, it's still a viable uh, organization. Uh, we fought in January of this year, and uh, it was a good show. Uh, all our fighters won, which isn't always the case. They all won, but... Uh, uh, you should probably schedule a fight for the fall while the constable from London is here. A little old-time oh. memory. We had other we had other functions we were gonna, we were gonna do then uh, yeah because you know some of these shows are a lot of work I mean they just don't just happen they there were a lot of work you know uh, now we've pretty much got the wheel in the groove so it goes forward you know there's a blueprint of how to do things and and that's but it, it's still a lot of work now if we turn from that the benefit fights you became a instructor. A guest instructor at the academy yes. during the recruit class. Talk yes. to us about that. Well, uh, I was asked to do it, and I uh, the first class I did was the 59th RTT, and uh, and it went fairly consistently forward all the way up until uh, the year 2000, and then uh, uh, there was a a couple of speed bumps there. Uh, uh, and the program was uh, watered down a little bit um, because, well, I, because of personalities involved. Uh, you get some guy who got his ass kicked uh, when, 20, he, when he was a recruit. 25 years ago, doesn't think much of the program, and now he's, uh, now he's a major or whatever the rank might be. And, uh, so they, they have, they have uh, made the boxing not quite as... A big part of the well, right now, yeah. The, in the last year, my God, the last year, uh, it's taken a downward spiral. They now use 18 ounce gloves, you know, you know. And and the regular to... the regular glove is how much? Well, I, we use 16 ounce gloves. I mean, we use sparring gloves, you know. Or when you're fighting professionally, you wear an eight ounce glove, you know. Uh, or if you're they they have eight or ten ounce gloves, but usually pro fighting gloves are eight ounce gloves. Uh, amateurs use 10 and 12 ounce clubs. We use 16 ounce clubs. I didn't see any damn reason at all to change it to 18 ounce clubs. But what it is was somebody injecting their personality into the program to make a change for the sake of making a change. Not to make it safer, okay? Uh, that's it. So the, um, when you were training since 79, right. you gave them the basics a basic right. instructional school about the different types of punches and yeah it's you know it's not neurosurgery but a lot of these things are uh, condition reflexes it's the same thing you've got to do over and over again then it's just condition it's a condition reflex well if they give you you know they gave me almost enough time to get the basics down and we leave the rest up to them uh, but, a lot we, but of we all everybody fought though everybody fought they had at least they fought once they had one fight and that's was, like a one round fight yeah it was a one round fight just to give them a taste because some of these people have never been in yes a fight. exactly right exactly right and uh, uh they didn't know left jeff or right never been hit in the face and never been hit in the face and then you know uh and that was more of a shock to the woman that came on because you know been most of them never been, you they've know, been, punched. They've in been the, treated like women. Yeah, it, most of them never been punched in the face. So uh, that was a little, that was a little hill for them to climb when they did it. And some did, some did okay, some did pretty good, and some didn't. So well, the same with the men. No, that's what I mean exactly. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I'm just saying, if you put a 130 pound woman in with a 130 pound men, okay, she's gonna 99 percent of the time lose. Okay. And no one, no one likes to lose. But it definitely gives the troopers that are it gives going a, out to the road yeah. some experience. Yeah, it gives them a taste, you know, the, how it feels. And, and knowing that, they're less apt to bite off more than they can chew. They're less right. apt to do it. 
You know, because they'll think back, oh, wait a minute. When I had to fight somebody, you know, last year or wherever it was, okay, I didn't fare too well, and, and that guy was a lot smaller than this guy. And so, if anything, it doesn't make them brave, it makes them more thoughtful. It makes them more thoughtful. Very good. Anything you'd like to add? Well, uh, I would like to add, I've, I've done this uh, interview without any prepared notes and no makeup, okay? And so, I uh, hope you take that in consideration <laughs> upon your final determination yes, sir. of whether or not this will fly. I appreciate it very much. Oh, you got it. Thank you.